troops from all over Iraq, Iran, um, Syria, Saudi Arabia will take its place. Why do you think that? If American troops and British troops left suddenly, a vacuum that is present would be exacerbated. The vacuum would be greater, and that would draw in not foreign troops necessarily, but it would draw in paramilitary groups. The last thing I want is to create greater instability in Iraq, and the way you avoid greater instability is to have a reasoned drawdown where you don't announce in advance when you are departing. But if they uh, uh, didn't leave, like said, uh, suddenly, do you think that vacuum will happen and other troops will if, come or what? If American troops did not leave suddenly, the political process clock would catch up with the insurgency clock. Everyone at, in this panel wants American troops out. George Bush wants American troops out. He, he what wants does, them out? He wants them out because no, do, his, do you want them out? At issue is once you start a war, if you, as Colin Powell said, if you break it, you own it. And that means you have to repair it. And the, rep reparation, the, the repairing is underway because the political process is successful. It's succeeding. Pardon me. Do we have anybody in the audience from Iraq as a matter of interest? Somebody, you, sir. How do you feel? Do you feel that foreign forces should get out of Iraq immediately? Well, uh, should well, they I get want, out or not? Well, I want now. them to stay for a while to repair what they ruined like the electricity and everything. They went, before the invasion in 2003, the electricity was good, it was 24 seven. But now it's like four hours a day, even less in Baghdad, the capital. Mm -hmm. So I want them to stay at least to repair what they ruined and then they, they can leave after. Yes, but as long as they're there, yes. if they do repair it, it will be targeted again because it's been repaired by the coalition. They are seen as the infidel and the occupier. And, uh, It'll never move forward whilst the occupation proceeds. Yeah. Because anything they repair, it will be destroyed. My son's first duties were put on oil pipeline security. Uh, they were being blown and targeted every day. And eventually when they withdrew from that, that area, the attacks on the pipeline stopped. Let's just have an answer to the key point which you made. Raymond Tander, he wants you to repair the ruin that you've created in Iraq. Why blame America for everything that goes wrong in Iraq? The insurgents are blowing up the pipelines, not U.S. forces. One of the problems... Not before the occupation. One, excuse me, Rich. One of the problems is the incentive structure that's been set up. If you are... What a, does that mean? A, 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 yes, a good question. Uh, algebra, if you are a member of a tribe and the pipeline goes through your territory, you make money if the pipeline is blown up and you get all kinds of infrastructure, yes you get money from the coalition if the, the pipeline is blown up. Any other Iraqi <laughs> students, <been>. perhaps? <laughs> he is a oh, Iraq. in the back. Yes. The back. Can, can you say whether you're for or Oh, against? I'm for the motion. You're for the motion? Yes. Okay. Um, you said that um, for your, you wish for the American troops to leave in an adult manner. Is it fair then to say that with the invasion of Iraq, with the invasion of the troops and the torturing and whatnot that's gone in, in the prison, that's gone on in the prisons so far, was that an, carried out in an adult manner? So is it fair now to bring to the table, well, let's do this in an adult way? Well, torture is not U.S. policy. Torture is an aberration. I'm opposed to it. Secretary Rumsfeld's opposed to it, and it, the people who authorized it should be punished. But that is not what America is. America's the, the John F. Kennedy statement, we will go anywhere to defend any friend so the light of liberty can survive. That's what America is about. America is going to Bosnia, going to Haiti, going to Somalia to help on humanitarian crises. Well, well then you ask, you ask us, why is America held to blame for everything that has gone wrong in Iraq today? Yes. Perhaps the answer to your question is, why did America feel it was responsible to go in and fix Iraq in the first place? Thank you very much for that applause. <laughs> every, How about an answer? In, every intelligence service thought that 
Saddam was trying to acquire nuclear weapons and had constituted mobile biological labs and had chemical weapons of mass destruction. I don't think that was her point. I think her point that was if you go in, you take responsibility and you also have to take the blame when things go wrong. I fully agree that if you go in and break things, you should repair them, and that is what the United States and Great Britain are trying to do. That's what the $4 billion a month for the Iraq war is trying to do, reconstruct the country. Okay, gentleman in the fifth row. To those arguing uh, for the motion, isn't the withdrawal of the troops just the easiest solution? I mean, you started the thing without the approval of the United Nations in the first place. Absolutely. Shouldn't you have the decency to follow up and continue and actually give democracy to Iraq? Nobody said that we just withdraw the troops. What I said was that in the next six months, we have an opportunity an opportunity to withdraw responsibly, to redeploy, I would say, re responsibly, to redeploy in the region over the horizon. I agree with that. But we need to implement a political agenda in the region. We need to implement a security regime in the region so that we provide stability in the wake of withdrawal. No one's talking about a precipitous pulling out and leaving a mess. We're talking about the fact that America can no longer do the job because it's become a target and part of the problem. Okay, time, time is marching on. The question for this side of the hall, please. Lady at the back. Um, my question is, if the foreign troops pull out immediately and leave Iraq to rebuild and stabilize their country on their own, um, how, li how likely is a civil war considering the current conflicts between the different religious groups in Iraq? Ali al-Bayati. And that was the reason some of the people say, if you go against the regime in Iraq and change it, you will have a civil war and Iraq will be fragmented. Iraq is more united now than any other time. There is no civil war. The Iraqi society are one society. They are one family. They are, there is intermarriages in the tribal. The tribal system in Iraq ensure that there is no civil war at all. One family, they're deeply divided. This is a dysfunctional government that on can hardly other, agree on anything. On the other hand, they are deeply... I don't recognize the planet they are, that they you're are, talking they about. Are, they are deeply united they are deeply united in fighting terrorism. Eight and a half million people went to the ballot boxes. Ten million people went to ratify the national constitution wrought by the Iraqi people. And you will see more people joining the election. That is a united family. And 45% think it's legitimate to attack the coalition forces. It's interesting because the Sunni population was almost unified in supporting those attacks on coalition forces. But you know what else? The Shia community was divided, and there are significant segments of that community that support the insurgency. Look, you are, you are, you are, I, I, look I, do not, I do not disagree with you that there is an Iraqi identity that will survive our withdrawal. I believe it, and I believe that Iraq will find a way to solve its problems itself. But do not think for a minute that the American presence is secure because the Iraqi people do not support the insurgents. There too many two, of them there do. Is, there is two different issues here. You're talking about differences in political views. That exists everywhere else. We are talking about united people going, killing each other. The Iraqi people are united against terrorism. All Different right. views, political views, exist everywhere. Okay. Of course it exists. Political okay. views, we don't blow each other up. They're blowing each other up in, in Iraq. I think you don't know what's going on. All right, gentlemen in the fifth row. What good and convincing examples that you have to give to the Iraqi people of foreign occupation setting up um, democracy in other countries? Japan and Germany. What about Somalia, uh, Vietnam, very Cuba, diff Very Panama. different circumstances. He asked me for two examples. I, he asked me for one, I gave him two. A little disingenuous, <laughs> don't you think? You accept that? Well, I'm not convinced because Japan, it took a lot of lives to, to set up this democracy. It wasn't this kind of democracy. Yeah. Right. Remember this wasn't when, democracy, it was demolishing. Do you remember in France and in Italy and Greece, the communists began to make inroads after World War II and many people started losing hope? Well, we have to stay the course long enough for my colleague and his people to defend their own representative institutions. Do you realize it might take hundreds of years? 
I've got time. It's good. <laughs> okay, we've come to the point in the proceedings where we're going to vote on the motion that this House believes that foreign forces should leave Iraq immediately. Would you please take your voting machines? If you want to vote for the motion, press button one, the yellow one. If you want to vote against, please press button two, the red one. And would you do it now, please, and press just once? You don't need to go on pressing it indefinitely. The machine will record your vote pretty instantly. So the vote is coming up there on the screen. And the result, 69.5% for the motion, 30.5% against the motion is resoundingly carried. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Professor Tanza looks very shocked, but all it remains for me to do now is to thank him and the other panelists for coming. Thank you, the audience, for making your way here. We will be back in the form of the Doha debates in a month's time. Please join us then. For now, thank you very much for coming. Have a safe journey home. Good night. Wow.